All right, hello everybody, and welcome back to the second week of playoffs for the MCL League of Legends title here in the preseason. Tonight we have Paradise Valley going up against Glendale, our second and third seeds, duking it off to see who will be making it through to the finals. Uh, with me tonight, I have Memon as usual. How are you doing tonight? Good, good. Super excited for this uh, for this series. Having the two and the third seed playoff is going to be some interesting stuff. Yeah, it should be a, it should be a close game. And uh, just jumping straight into it, we got the draft going up for you for the side of Paradise Valley. Uh, they decided to go with a Zaya Sejuani and Yone ban. Uh, Yone really annoying. Just wanted to make sure uh, Minamori was off of it, and maybe they were a little scared of uh, Zeus's performance on it last. Uh, <laughs> Last game G1 played. And then on the other side, it uh, looks like Glendale decided to opt in for, you know, your classic bands against Paradise Valley, which is the Gwen, the Kindred, and then some uh, random other thing. They decided to go with the Rel, uh, just because Rel is incredibly strong this, uh, just in general right now. So just getting rid of it is always good. Less engaging so it supports. Yeah, and Rel can also just be played in multiple positions. So it's just good to get rid of, you know, a, a potential jungle support pick. Mm -hmm. All right, and then if we look at the lanes, we got Cassante versus Orn. Uh, Alessandra on the Cassante versus Aspect on the Orn. We have Nico versus Rek'Sai. We have Syndra versus Fizz. Uh, and then our bot lane, we have the combo of Misfortune Senna uh, versus Ezreal, and it should be Karma here. I... Why are we hovering Talon? There you go. They there figured go. it out. They got it. They learned out of, they learned out of what their champ they picked earlier was. Yeah, oh, so we have two very oh. different uh two very very different team comps here, right? On a on a side of PvE, you have more of a scale heavy comp. Just mm -hmm. control your lanes, play it safe early game and really just look for those team fights. And more on the side of Glendale, you know, you have the fizz, you have the rec side, so it's going to be just really aggressive plays. Trying to get their mid laner ahead early so they can snowball the game out of control. Yeah. After uh, Minamori's performances last week, this looks like the person that they do want to funnel all their as many resources as they can into uh, just because they've been doing such a good job in the uh, in, in mid lane this season. So we'll see what uh, we'll see what they got cooking. Yeah, it should be exciting stuff. You know, <laughs> usually we see Alessandra more on a carry champion, I'd say. You know, so it's interesting to see him come out with the Cassante. Um, Canyon. I think this is the first time, or maybe one second, maybe time he's playing Nico in the league. So I'm excited what he's going to do with it. Maybe he's going to go for that, you know, turn into a minion lane gank. I'd love to see something like that. Yeah. Um, Sidude on, you know, the control, the control mage. We're getting more used to it uh, just because, you know, Silas has been less relevant nowadays. Um, and then having Greg's beef on that Senna is yeah. always, always fun to see. Yeah, but then on the other side, you got you got Minamori on the Fizz. Fizz, absolutely unique champion in the league. I'm pretty sure it's never been played in the MCL, uh, as far as I know, unless it was played in an off-stream game. Uh, but, you know, this this is a good way to deal uh, with Bursty side of the Nico Syndrome misfortune and Senna. Uh, a lot of targets for him. Target rich environment plus Rex side uh, should be able to set up some nice uh, kills early uh, into the mid lane for him. So uh, if that fish gets out of control, you know, should be should be pretty pretty good for Glendale. And Orin, you know, it's always good to have the Orin in the back pocket. If games go along, having upgraded items never hurts. Plus, just having a good way. Uh, to engage and disengage fights uh, with the ultimate is always helpful. Yeah. And I, I, as we all and Karma are just rather safe picks for any lane. Enchanter plus the most self-peel AD carry in the in the game. Always good to have. 
<laughs> yeah, so I'm wondering if we're going to have um, Karma move around the map a little bit more just because Ezreal can sustain himself pretty well. He can, you know, clear waves on his own just fine. And we'll just see how much they want to funnel into their Fizz. Maybe they want to funnel some gold into their Rek'Sai. And just for the side of PV, just playing a save, right? At least that's uh, what their comp is saying at the moment. Well, they're not, they're not going to play it safe, as in, like, playing it far back. Let's not get that wrong, you know? Let's not, let's not, let's give a little bit of, of, of a little bit of, of help here. They're just, they're just going to look for just the high percentage plays. They're not going to try and, uh, out, straight out, do crazy LPL style, let's invade level one. No, they're just going to look for the nice high percentage looks for gigs, nice high percentage looks for just, uh, just in general. Uh, until it once and then once they do uh, scale up a bit, then they'll do the LPL stuff where it's like, what if I just invaded their Raptors at 13 minutes by myself? Yeah, I mean, like their their top top side is not as weak as you know as we really would think on the side of PV. So this early game, it looks like we got some pings, maybe the five stack. Yeah, it looks like I'll they might the be. Map? Yeah, it looks like they might be looking to uh, to go for a little invade, perhaps. Looks like they're posturing for it. Uh, but no, it looks like Rex. I'm not sure what what to do here. Thirty seconds until minions spawn. Exactly. Two of them have been spotted. Yep, they are all aware. Inamori and Tizo did get sighted out, so. They'll not go point to plan, so it looks like they're just gonna fall back in uh, to the normal sort of five point strategy. Not go for anything too crazy here. Yeah, Alessandra getting that ward on Raptors. It's good for information, especially with that first clear. You can track the jungler really easily when you have that ward on Raptors. Looks like Rek'Sai is positioning to start topside. It looks like we're going to have Nico start Raptors. Um, Nico's just got good clear with, uh, with the Q, the, the Blooming Blossom. It just does a, a lot of damage to multi-target camps. So typically you see him do, uh, if they don't want to do the clear with their uh, carries, which they didn't. Uh, it looks like it was a good decision because if we look at that map, it looks like Glendale was looking for a cheeky sort of uh, little play here once the enemy team got back from their their wave, but they were already waiting for him in lane. Yeah, really good call from Canyon there, just saying, hey, listen, guys, you guys get to lane, you need that gold. It's a little bit risky if they ended up walking there, so just good call on the side, of Canyon. And it also just, you know, lets him play a little more mysterious in a sense. Like, a little bit harder to track him on that side. Big trades wow, coming up Louis, from bot lane. Louie taking a lot of damage, forced to flash out, taking one auto on the way back. And a big sort of move going on there in the bot lane. Going to make that laning phase a lot tougher for the side of Glendale here. Yeah, Expect losing that heal is going to be a big deal for them. Yeah, no heal, no flash. That is going to be a rough hurdle to overcome. But it's okay. They have, they do have uh, Ezreal. So, you know, if there's a champ, Ezreal and Karma, there, if there's a set of champs that can uh, overcome health bar differences, it would be them. Uh, Canyon is here for the regank. Tizo did get stunned up. Flash used by Canyon. A lot of damage going on to Tizo. Tizo going to be taken down first. And it looks like it's going to be a nice little move. The, the nice regank by Canyon, reading Tizo like a book. And that first blood coming from Sid. You saw him, he hit the sprinter, stunned up the Rek'Sai as he was coming in. It was just a really nice play from both of them. Yeah, beautiful play from both. A good look from Tizo, because that's exactly what you want to be doing uh, as Rek'Sai in this move. But unfortunately, Ganyan just knew, hey, that's what he wants to do. So I'm going to guess that's what he's going to do. And yeah, just having, uh, you know, that double CC on the mid lane makes it really hard just to not get caught out in that sense. Just, uh, a little bit of damage, not that much. Uh, but just some, trying to position themselves more aggressively, trying to, to scare off the, 
the predators that are in Paradise Valley. Yeah, and Aspect's taking full advantage of his, his kit here uh, with the fact that he is able to not have to, to go in lane. Grigsby's looking like in a bit of trouble. That is going to be the heal and the flash used from the side of Paradise Valley. Just returned almost immediately, so lane back to, back to a neutral position here. Yeah, and that's really good for Glendale because they were in a bit of a rough spot with not having flashing heal, but now the cooldowns are on the side of Glendale. When they get that flash heal up, they can look for an all-in, especially with Karma as well. They just do so much damage. Yeah. Those mantra cues are starting to hurt quite a bit. So we might be looking for a regank here from, from Tizo. Yep, Tizo is already on the way back. And they don't, know, don't know he's know there. He's it is in a bit of danger. They are going to find their way onto Grigsby to pick up a nice and easy kill, but uh, a fake Grigsby for the top lane. Uh, ganking Aspect here. The Stranglethorn is not quite going to be able to find their target. And Goose Freak, you know, finding himself in a bit of danger in the bot side there. Aspect doing a lot of damage. Flashing, though. And it's not is it going to be enough damage? Yes, it is. Can it be able to pick up a kill there? Louis has taken a lot of damage is in a bit of a dangerous spot here, but is using the minion wave to try and keep themselves uh, hidden away from Goose Freak for the time being. And Goose Freak not having mana there is really unfortunate. If he hit the Q on a caster minion and landed it on that Karma, she'd be in really big trouble there. She'd probably just be dead. <laughs> just gone. <laughs> she'd probably just out, out of the game, no more. Nina Mori uh, doing Fizz things in the mid lane. Yeah, we kind of expected Fizz to have like this sort of permanent push, right? Mm -hmm. Just cause like, it's just so much pressure. If you get full comboed by a Fizz, you're gonna be taken out. You're gonna be ha below half health for sure. Yeah. But uh, you know, CS is even on the side of mid lane. So props to uh, props to Sidu for, you know, making this hard laning phase, you know, pretty comfortable for himself. Yeah. I mean, it's off that early play uh, that and set up they're able to, to sort of keep this mid lane in check just one yeah, absolutely just one big move uh that we've been seeing a lot you know just one mistake from one side and it's like uh well how do we overcome this obstacle now it's for the side of paradise valley their solution was get one kill and then chill out yeah and it's worked out really well for him him having that lost chapter so early just makes his landing so much easier for him mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like the Paradise Valley bot lane have learned their lesson about dealing with the Tizo Dragon. Uh, they got control wards from the, the gank behind. They're just trying to be a little bit safer now. Looks like Goose Freak taking a lot of damage, forced to use the flash to get away from the root, uh, just to not die there. You just see Louie doing a bunch of, bunch of damage. And when they're not doing damage, of course, it's summoning spells with good usage of their own spells. Aspect Legend has no Bell's Breath, the all out being used, getting rooted, and it's just going to be a nice and easy kill for Alessandra. Right? That's the rough part about Orin, is Orin is once once you use your Bell's Breath, it's just free, grab somebody, and, and get CC'd. Yeah, and Canyon's really taking advantage of the fact that, you know, Tizo's playing definitely more towards bot side. So he's saying, you know what, I'm just going to answer cross map and make my life a lot easier. Yeah. And it looks like keeping in spirit, they're just going to go for that dragon. They know that Nico's on top side of map. It's going to take a moment to get there. And even if they do come for this dragon, it's going to be a hard position for them to invade in on. So it's just going to be a nice free dragon for Glendale. Good. Good play from both junglers. Just essentially knowing where each other is and making play after play off of the other person's positioning. Yeah, and Glendale should really use their early advantage in lanes just to get these early objectives because it's going to be a bit of a problem when they're in these team fights fighting for these objectives. It's just going to be a little bit harder for them. Minamori doesn't get caught by the stun there. Just dodges deftly to the side. Uh, just barely, but... Oh, and it looks like the big ult coming out. Subdued force to flash, but it's not going to be enough. And it looks like Tiso is going to be picking up the kill on the backside of that fight. Really unfortunate getting hit by that ult. Maybe if he didn't get hit by it, he would be fine, but he had to burn the flash and he still died in the process. Yeah, that's always an unfortunate one. Whenever you use flash to try and get out, you just, if you don't get out, you feel like you use it too late, but it's 
a good play, good play to get Inamori back in the game. That's what they were looking for. Unfortunately, Inamori does not get killed. Louis getting free hit by Goose Freak, but in the Ignite going down onto Grigsby, if it is going to be enough to take away the rest of his life. And it was here. It looks like they do have three members of Glendale looking to, to stop Canyon in his tracks here. Yeah, and like I said, those early objectives are oh. going to be important for Glendale. Wow. Yeah, a lot of damage that is flashed oh. used by Louis. Flash. Yeah, pathing there. It looked like they tried to, to path back and Riot tried to take them around the entire turret. Uh, so they had to use Flash just because Riot pathing kind of kind of messed them up there a bit. Yep, they Damn, do. we see something a little bit different. Oh, oh ulti use takes Ezo out of the fight. And it's going to be a big pop blossom to lock down Tizo. It looks like Aspect might be the next target. Minamori uh, coming in. Ultimate used by the Senna. Canyon looking over the wall. Not going to be able to get do anything there. Uh, has Flash, but decides not to use it. And they're just going to take the free little Rift Tail in, in a nice kill. Yeah, and putting gold in the pockets of Sidude is really just going to make his life easier. I think it's the right move to just give him as many kills as possible so he can just survive this laning phase. If Fizz gets out of control, it can be a really big problem for the whole team. Yep. Flash used by Mina Mori to try and get onto Grigsby. Grigsby flashing away the uh, last cone to take them back over. I would have thought he was going to chase that all the way in. Yeah, uh, the thing is, Mina Mori didn't have all, right? And that's just a big part of his kit right now. Oh. Looks like they're going Al for the rift mid. Yeah, Alessandrite took a lot of damage there. We took a lot of damage off the start of the fight. Just accidentally was too close uh, to the turret there. Well, he might be caught out here. That's, that's, big, that's a, a big damage. ult. He, he was free canceling to try and do some damage to Minamori, but it's not going to be enough. They're going to try and turn it back onto, onto Goose Freak. Goose Freak going for the last auto, but it's not going to be enough. And it's going to be Glendale picking up another kill this game. A really good bait from Minamori. He knew his team was coming, so he said, I can stay here a little bit longer. Especially with that E. Just yeah. can't be targeted. Yeah, and yeah, now uh, Louis is playing a very AP heavy build. So they are just looking to make uh, the life of the bot lane a living hell. Uh, just bursting them down whenever they get a chance. Yeah, and it makes sense. I feel like they want to end this game as early as possible. I mean, if Sidhu keeps on getting these kills and he's going to keep on getting these stacks, he's going to be a really big issue when it comes to team fights in late game. All right. Minamori is not quite able to get a turret plate there for their trouble, but doesn't get stunned either. So that's, that's good. As long as you, you don't get the turret plate, it's fine as long as you don't take two turret shots trying to get it. It looked like Aspect tried to go for a little pop there. Multi use onto T, so an all out keep going. The, nice unstoppable. Yeah, nice unstoppable. Both people we'll tried to go for the flash Q, but not quite able to connect it there. Yeah, good. Uh, gets good play from Alessandra right there. Gets two ults, isn't able to convert any kills, which is what you would hope to do. Canyon uh, being forced to use ulti and flash here. That's going to be a big shutdown. Nice turnaround. Yeah. Uses the flash, Louie walks up, and then the rest is history. Yeah, and now you see Louie playing more towards that mid lane just because, like, Ezreal's 3 0. He has an item under his belt. He should be fine in the lane phase by himself. Yeah. Minamori has sided out Canyon. Uh, looks like Canyon might be going for this off of Tizo. Tizo taking quite a bit of damage. Does not have the ulti. That is just going to be another kill onto Subdued. Minamori on the backside of the fight might be looking for the Canyon. Uh, ult he used to try and get themselves out. Looks like Andrew Sam is going to be picking up Nico on the backside. Alessandra is here though. It's four versus three. They're just looking to escort their team members out of the fight. Good initial pick on Tizo, but the side of GCC was just waiting for it, Newing knew that what they were doing, and just making a good play off the backside of that, that pick. Yeah, it was a really nice pick, but just like, Lindo just has so much poke right now with that Karma going full AP and the Ezreal being 4-0. It just makes it really hard to kind of get on top of anyone at that stage. Yep. 
Will we taking a turret shot? I mean, now, now we just see them keep falling back into this, into this same the same tried and true position. Yeah, it's like if they keep on, if they can keep on getting this lane lead and possibly get this first tower, it's gonna be really good um, for the side of Glendale because they can get mid to move around the map a little bit more. <laughs> lot of good mages out there. <laughs> we have Canyon here in the bottom side, but we also have Tizo, so both sides could be looking for some sort of potential move. But it looks like Tizo is looking for a potential move into the mid lane to try and get that big shutdown onto the dude. Uh, but Sadu lock it back, playing safe. Has a feeling there, there. It looks like they're chasing it in, but Alessandra on the top side of the map is fighting Aspect Legend. Aspect Legend trying to run away, but it's a Cassante. Yeah, it's hard to run away from this man. He just keeps dragging you back in. Ulti used from Angel Sandwich, and it looks like the side of PVCC might just have to back up here. Yeah, the Ezreal does so much damage. Yeah, 4 and 0 oh has the Essence Reaver. It's a little hard to deal with them right now. And that's a completed Sunfire Aegis for Aspect there. Yeah, and that's going to help him out in just getting Alessandrite to, you know, not low, and he's going to go in. Yeah. Yep, just going to use the burn and the extra armor to keep themselves a little bit better off in these trades. Try and make themselves tankier. And there's that first turret coming out on the bot side. They weren't quite able to, to stop Louis back here. Uh, and look at all the vision control from Glendale. Look at how much vision they have in this bot half of the map. Just even them clearing it out. You clear out one, two wars, and it's still they have five more hanging out. And then on the bottom side, Aspect Legend going to be using the Unstoppable to get themselves safe. There's a teleport coming in from the Fizz. Canyon with a big ult to do a lot of damage. That's going to be one taken down. Mina Mori towards the flash. But it looks like Alessandrite is hungry. They're coming to get more. Canyon does have the ignite on him, taking away. But Louis is finding himself in danger as Alessandrite picks up another kill. Second That's a huge game. ult. Oh, oh and what a wow. big, what a snipe from Ezreal. Nice Ridiculous read. Play. Knew he was gonna go Rift Herald. He was one shot, so it's questionable. But he did find the ult at the end of the day. Looks like they're still looking for more in the top side. Yeah. Angel Sandwich uh, could essentially do something here. He is the strongest member of the team right now. 5 and 0 oh, does have two full items here along with boots. So, could do some crazy stuff. Also, the, the, the members of Paradise Valley do not have ultis up and ready uh, for this fight. Looks like Rick's Beef is going in on it though. Oh, Exhaust to use, flash to use. Good flash, good for the side of Glendale. Just getting themselves out safe. That exhaust uh, was a little bit scary. Looks like they're gonna position for Rift Herald. Canyon knows he's walking up towards the top side. We'll see. Goose Freak is unaware of all the stuff that. Oh, it looks like Blue is not quite able. Uh, uh, not quite able to connect all the abilities onto to Goo or not Goose Freak, Grigsby. But uh, it's an ulti use onto Canyon. Not quite able to get their own ulti off, just taking so much damage immediately. As Alessandra trying to make some sort of play here in between the members of four people, and they're just going to end up getting picked off themselves. Just finding themselves in their own jungle, getting taken apart. That's yeah, nice. losing losing Griggs beef there was really big, and Alessandra was in base and he was forced to TP to that fight. This is unfortunate. Bad start to the fight. Ended up losing a lot more than you wanted to there. But then on the bot side, Goose Freak has been sort of sitting by themselves in the lane, uh, getting themselves back in the game. You know, they only have, uh, they have no kills, they got two deaths. They are coming back into it, uh, just getting this solo XP, the solo gold. Uh, and if they can get this turret, you know, that's free 300 in the pocket. Yeah, and if they can find these engages with Nico and pair it up with an MF ult, it's going to do a lot of damage. So trying to get that gold in the pocket of MF is going to be a big deal. Yeah. And that play looks pretty good uh, from from Canyon to try and, and get an ulti there, but Minamori just does so much damage, just immediately bursts at him. Oh, you want to ult? Well, you have uh, you don't have enough time, gamer. <laughs> 
Yeah, and they're going to be looking for the third dragon here. They do have a bit of a gold lead, about 1.5k. We'll see if PB wants to fight this. He's not going in on the canyon. Canyon forced to flash out. Ulti, two ultis used on the canyon. Canyon using their own ulti, trying to lock down Tizo on the backside of the fight. Aspect doing a lot, but it's going to be a shutdown for Subdued on to onto, uh, onto Ezreal. Flashing out, Alessandra is able to get themselves back over the wall nice and safe, but they are still all out. And boom, big damage from Louie, just sending that AP Night Harvester build, letting them know, letting that thing talk. And having Alessandra just go 1v4, one, one just not allowing Glendale to get outside of that pit into the jungle and help his team out. She's really big from Alessandra right there. Yeah, Canyon has to be careful. Uh, both junglers have to be really careful if either one walks up too far. It's, oh, that's a big root onto Tizo. Looks like they might be going for some big play. Tizo going to be taken down, ulti used by the MF to try and stop them in their Minoru's on the backside. Yep, Louis doing a lot of damage, but Sadu going to do some more as well. They might be just giving the Drake here. Sadu might be able to do something. Neither team has a jungler with smite up, but Minamori is just going to slow it and wait until their uh, team shows up. Sadu does get hit by the ultimate, but the, does go golden. Briggs Beef on the backside, though, takes a lot of damage. Briggs Beef going to stun them up. And it looks like they're just going to go for the objective, maybe. No, yeah, who got it? Sindra got it. And after all of that, big flash by Aspect going to be picking up at a thousand gold shutdown for themselves. Yeah, and that's really big. You really want your tank to have items. Even ju just two items on Orn is really big for their team. Finding that shutdown was really big. Super chaotic fight in the Dragon Pit. Losing both junglers at the same time. Kind of just stalling, waiting for teammates to show up. Minamori was one yeah. shot. Senna found that pick. And Sid, dude, somehow found that dragon. That's the that's the power of an eight kill syndrome right there. Just throwing out Q's. It hurts. It does a lot of damage. I mean, the goal leave only only two K apart. So it looks like uh does we already have a rift? Oh he does. That is a rift that they got in their hands. Okay. Yeah, we'll see what Minamori wants to do with it. I'm assuming he's going to try to get into a side lane and create pressure. Because really, the only one who can answer Minamori at the moment is Cassandra or Syndra. And if you put more than one one player in the bot lane, it gives a Glendale a Baron angle. So we'll see how they want to play it out. Yeah, and also with how elusive of an assassin fit is, trying to fight them with multiple people is not the greatest of ideas. It just, uh, they will be able to get in and get out and the number of advances will not matter. Uh, Aspect Blush taking a lot of damage. Uh, Alessandra going to be picking up another kill, but Tizo had, did show. Looks like Minamori is here. Uh, did teleport up for this move here. They, uh, Alessandra is going all out. The ultimate used uh, by Griggs. Be pick up, be picking up a kill for Minamori. It might be two, but Tizo is going to be picking up that second kill. Good teleport for Minamori to get themselves uh, into a good spot. but Yeah, unfortunately, he had to drop the Rift Herald, but it... They didn't come with much of a cost, and they're they're going to be able to find the Baron here. Yeah. Two members down. They know Syndra is in the bottom side. That is a good Baron angle to me. Also, Angel Sandwich does this thing pretty fast. They're doing a lot of damage. If they find Minamori here, they could look for something. It would be a 3v3, and Sidhu does have teleport. Yeah. But it looks like they might just give it. It might be wise just to give him uh, the, give the Baron. Uh, all five members do have it. So, they will need to be careful. But yeah, yeah, we'll so see I... what Glendale wants to do with his Baron buff. Because they have the first two tier, for the first tiers for mid and bot. So they might be looking to get that first tier top. Yeah. And then they are, they're already controlling so much vision in the jungle, especially in the top side. If they can get vision across the map, it's just gonna, it's, you're not gonna let Canyon able to walk in his jungle anymore yeah in the top side they have fog of war essentially turned off uh which is weird because even in pro play you don't see this much you don't see this much vision put down from a single team and just so much oh stunned up might be a nice little route onto aspect legend aspect legend finding himself picked off on the side again two ults used and committed to kill them off once and for all uh, that's going to be a nice little kill. Once again, going on to Subdued here, Alessandra uh, fighting the Baron minions in the top side. 
Uh, and then it's 2v3 in this mid trying to hold this turret as best they can. It's trying to slow the advance. Yeah, nice movement from the bot side. They didn't take any damage from any of the abilities that were thrown out. Which allows them to step up a little bit more. There comes the Amina Mori ult. Yep, Grigsby has taken the ult. So they are, did take a lot of damage, did get chunked out, but uh, they aren't really in that much of a uh, danger right now because they can just back up and come back uh, pretty quickly now that Cassante's covering. But it looks like they're going to chill here uh, with their less of an HP bar just because Cassante's here and ready. Uh, Louis is just going to, to poke out a little bit. They know the rest of the, the side of Glendale has backed off. The assault has been stopped for now. Yeah, now you're going to see Glendale trying to set up for Dragon. It is up in 30 seconds. And getting trying to get that tier 2 was a good move on Glendale just because it gives them a little bit more time to get control of that pit. Right now, it's just a fight for mid lane. Canyon taking a lot of damage, ulti used, but it looks like Mina Mori is going to take them out. But Mina Mori going to be picked off on the backside as well. Alessandrite going all out. I can't find advance forward, so this is going to be a little bit spooky because uh, they no longer have that for the fight against uh, Glendale, so they can't isolate a single target. Uh, and with no jungle, they might just have to give the uh, give, give the dragon here. Just one bad step from uh, Canyon just means that it looks like uh, Glendale's going to be going to soul point here. Yeah, Minamori finding these ults is just really big for the team. It creates so much setup. You know, it allows Rek'Sai to get a free a free Q on him, and then if he wants to, you can find that ult angle. Yeah, free. Free little engage onto an important member, and this is what we were talking about earlier in draft. Uh, Minamori, the Fizz. Got four squishy members. The only person you can't really deal with is Cassante. And what happens every fight? Minamori assassinates a squishy member, and then Cassante does Cassante things. Then he does the Giga Chad music plays as he star walks you to the enemy base. Yeah, and until Minamori or Alessandra slip up, it's gonna keep on running like that. Uh, that extra blue buff from Tizo. So far, I mean, when it comes to farm and stuff, uh, the only big difference is bot lane, Angel Sandwich having a 70 CS lead, nearly. Yeah, I mean, not a, not a big surprise from the top lane. You have two big guys. They really just want to get farm. They want to get their items. They want to be the tank for the team. Yeah. Mid lane, Syndra. Really good at farming from far away. Fizz can just perma walk up. Yeah, Fizz not really ever in danger in any sorts of fights. Uh, Use Freak dodging out away from the Mystic shots. Louie taking quite a bit of damage just from a, was a Q auto. And it looks like uh, Mina does trade the ultimate for Zanyas there. So if they were to look for an angle onto Fizz, now would be the time. But also on the opposite side, Tizo should know that uh, Sadud is rather vulnerable. And it looks like, oh, big move there. That's just going to be one dead Rex side. Just got barely tagged uh, by the, the Nico E and then just boom. Yeah, a bit of gone. a dangerous play from Tizo. You know, he doesn't have the Fizz close to him. Sure, he's in lane and he's getting the prio for top lane, but you don't know where the rest of PD is, so it's just a bit of a dangerous situation. Yeah, it looks like Alessandra right here is chasing. Nope, oh, just gonna, gonna go advance in on the jungle. Call it a day. Yeah, and it's just gonna be a fight for top vision at this point. The Baron is up in about 20 seconds. You want to get those waves pushed in. Losing your tier one and your tier two in mid is going to make it a little more difficult. But I think if PB just sticks together, pushes out these lanes, plays safe, they will be able to contest this. Yeah. And right now, uh, Glendale has full control in the mid, just still having both those turrets up. It just makes, it gives them so much space to work with. Uh, it looks like they are looking to clear out uh, the bear now that it's spawned. Uh, you know, 
where Canyon is. Canyon does, I believe, use Smite there. Uh, but they're not quite gonna do anything yet. They're a little concerned about it. We have a big ulti going down mid, and it looks like it just barely missed Goose Freak, so they're gonna be okay. Uh, but that wave is pretty much gone at this point. Decimated, reduced to atoms. Yeah, and Tizo get grabbing that red buff, it, it might be pretty big for this fight coming up. If we do get a fight. Aspect walking around the jungle a little bit. Minamore is backing. Yeah. This is a bit of a, a dangerous situation to be in. He does have TP, so he can use it if he has to. You see Alessandra pushed up all the way in the bot side. He's just trying to create pressure. He also has TP, so it's not that big of a deal for him to not be here right now. Yeah. The only person who can answer him right now is, uh, in fact, the Fizz. So, Fizz doing their job and going and answering. And it looks like uh, Alessandra is just going to recall. Um, looks like they might be looking to fight over that uh, next dragon rather than the Baron here. Yeah, smart play from PV. I mean, Mountain Soul on Orin is it's a lot. It's a pain. It's a lot to shield. The two Mountain Dragons quite a bit of resistance. We yep. know has to blow ult. Yep, blows the ult, uses the ult, uh, but the W from Cassante uh, just lets him walk out of that without taking anything. Uh, so no Minamori ult. But it looks like they might be looking for this angle here. Louis Levania's Candy, or Angel's Sandwich, going to be picking up Candy. It looks like Briggs is going to be uh, taking a lot of damage on the side. It looks like Alessandra might be the one caught out here, though, uh, as Sadud now finding themselves in a bunch of trouble. Big Stun is able to push two members away, but Flash and Zani is used for Sadud. That is really good for Glendale. Now they have free control of this dragon. Yeah, PB loses so much in that fight. They just got caught out in their own jungle and, well, got honestly, it. burning a, burning a flash of TP, a couple flashes of TPs and Azania's is not that bad for what they lost. Never yeah. Yeah, it does go. allow Glendale to go straight for this Baron, though. Yes, and that is going to be a problem. I mean, Canyon is getting up just now, and they are going to have the Baron picked up pretty much and it, there is no way for them to really get onto it here without the rest of their team. Bridge Beef going to take a lot of damage, going to be killed off on the side, uh, trying to stop it. Yeah, and just trying to find picks in this moment. It's just really dangerous to walk up into that pit. You don't have any vision. You don't know where the people are positioned. Never fought. And this gives Glendale a really big chance to just end the game. The respawn timers are getting out of hand. With his Baron buff, they're going to probably go 1-3-1. One, one. Oh, Flash E from Flash Angel it. Sandwich, but Flash E from Goose Freak to get himself back out of it. Uh, yeah, I mean, all three are, are all three big abilities there from, from Angel Sandwich to use the Flash, the Heal, the E, and still weren't but quite I able to find uh, their heart. mark. Peace. Yeah, and any pick here can just end the game for... For PV, so they have to be really careful when they're walking up to these waves. Yeah. Have to get those waves pushed, but they also can't afford to push out so far that they put themselves at risk here. I'll say I'm right. Uh, going to be using the unstoppable to get themselves out safe. Goose free healer to keep himself alive. Louie taking a lot of damage, but that will be all for now. And it looks like. Minamori found the clone. Looks like a lot of damage going on to Louie. Big ulti engage. It looks like um, Minamori is going over the wall uh, with Alessandra right there. The ultimate, the Gargoyle Stoneflake boys are doing a lot of damage. Alessandra taking a lot of damage towards the flash out. It looks like Kanya tried to get the Q, but it's not quite enough. A lot of damage from Minamori is going to be doing it. Putting a nail in the coffin of PV's jungler. Blue team's yeah, initial good look on Tamina Mori, but uh, that Fizz is very strong, and uh, Alessandra just does not have to damage right now to really uh, do anything about it. Uh, even, yeah. though they're able to, even though they're able to solo isolate, uh, just missing two abilities is, essentially makes it so that Mina is safe. And having gold in the pocket, Syndra, 
is not necessarily bad, but when you're just getting constantly pushed in and you have these carries like Ezreal who can just poke you out, it makes it really hard for Syndra to make any impact. When, when they do walk up and we find them with a big uh, ult coming from uh, one side, or like, like a good uh, canyon ult, we do see them doing quite a bit of damage with the Syndra, but we'll see if they are actually able to continue that lead that they have in that area. It's like Alessandra just trying to fight Aspect in the top side. Yeah, they don't want to give any more. This Baron buff has already been a lot. They got the mid in him, so they're going to be constantly pushed up in mid. Like I said, any mistake at this point could just end the game. All right. Yeah. Any mistake could end it, but we are getting close to late game, so if they are able to hold, this was the game plan. We wait for 35 minutes and then we play the video game. Yeah, and there's, uh, honestly, at this point, there's not much you can do other than that. I mean, I'm already hopping around, doing the fish things. It's like Alexander might be looking for something onto Angel Sandwich here. Angel Sandwich is only 8, 1, and 8. It's only gotten killed once so far. Been playing very safe. But uh, using this uh, champion safety uh, to the best of their abilities. Yeah, and PV have to be careful because everyone on the side of Glendale is so mobile. Yep, like just there, to do taking a lot of damage, having to use the Zhonyas to keep themselves alive. But uh, that is just going to be really, really rough. This dude forced to back out there. Only have four defenders here, and one of them uh, is really low on HP still. Minamori just going to be running around the map doing everything they, they can. It looks like uh, Minamori tried to find an angle there onto Goose Freak, wasn't quite able to get the, the look, but Flash Q is going to be able to do it. Ulti used Minamori taking a lot of damage, might be being picked off on the side here. Uh, Minamori does manage to go and give themselves another kill before going down. Danny going to be getting a big, big objective there. Alessandra is in the middle of four people. Will they be able to make the final last stand? They are able to pick off one and get out. Gargoyle stone plate, but is it going to be enough double kill going over to Aspect Legend? I spoke too soon about getting out the E from the dude trying to take themselves alive, but Angel Sandwich going to be taking down the mid laner and taking down the bases. And that is going to be game one going over to Glendale. Yeah, it's just a really well fought match out for Glendale. They played through their strengths really well. They did feed the gold into the Fizz, and he was able to make the game just very difficult. Yep. I mean, that was the entire game plan. They were initially able to hold him back a little bit with that uh, early kill onto Sadud, but it just wasn't enough to stabilize uh, the lane. Eventually, once Fizz was able to get out, they weren't that too. They weren't too weak. So they were able to actually uh, get some stuff done. So uh, what would you like to see change from either team uh, going into the next game? Yeah, I think um, maybe because we know that Minamori really likes playing aggressive champions in the mid lane. And they did. They were able to shut Minamori down in the early game. But at the end of the day, Minamori was able to be mobile on the map and find picks and find these really good... Just these really good catches. And it kind of just took away that chance of having the Syndra be the carry late game. Maybe just focusing a little bit more on the rest of the map, mm -hmm. right? Because like I said, Syndra having all this gold is really good if the Fizz doesn't get out of control. Yeah. All right, well, so you heard it here. So from Glendale would want to see more uh, more aggression and more aggressive mid laners for Beat Amore. You know, they already do it a lot, but we love watching it. So if you could give us a little more Mina Amore, please. Uh, and then I think what I would like to see uh, a change from Paradise Valley is to see Greeks Beef go a bit more of an engaged support. Uh, obviously, the row was banned, but you know, he's got Leona, you got Blitz, you got so many options here. I feel like, uh, I feel like an, a nice engage would really help 
out a bit, finding angles onto the onto the team. All right, well, we'll see what the teams actually decide to do going into game two, and we'll see you all in a bit.
And we are back with game two. Have Glendale playing blue side and Paradise Valley playing red side. The first three bands on the side of Glendale, Rail, Kindred, Gwen, keeping it the same as last game. You know, really just making sure that top lane is handled. You don't, you really don't want Canyon on that Kindred. He's done some crazy stuff that, you know, at this point I don't want to talk about. Paradise yeah. Valley... Going for a different approach. They're going to ban out the Nico this time because they didn't want to first pick it. They're going to ban out the Sejuani. And they're going to ban out the Zaya and kind of leave mid a little bit more open. Yeah. Uh, their, their initial strategy was to get rid of Yone in the last one uh, because they were planning on picking Nico jungle uh, off round one. So they were okay with leaving it up knowing that Minamori would never ban it. Uh, so now they're just going to get rid of it themselves here because they're on red side. They don't want me to worry to have access to it. And it looks like we got Aspect Legend playing Orn again. Aspect Legend uh, doing, uh, some would say, God's work in top lane, being the only player who consistently goes, yeah, I'll play Orn. Yeah, I'll play, I'll play Tank. I'll do this every game. Just absolute madness. Uh, then we got Orn versus Camille in the, in the top side. Uh, Camille could be a little rough for the Orn. Uh, I guess Cassante wasn't easy, but Camille, I think, is a little rougher uh, with that Q, the, the burst pop you got. Uh, Tizo went back with the Rek'Sai, and we got uh, Viego coming in from uh, from Canyon. So Canyon stepping back onto the, their Viego. Rek'Sai did some good stuff uh, last game with the... So bringing it back. And then we have Silas versus Akali, uh, which... Should be a little bit more of a skill matchup. Neither champ really outright wins. It comes down to who uh, plays the initial trades uh, better. So that way, once six comes around, when they both have uh, Kali ult, who can really pop the other person. Uh, and then Varus Nautilus versus Jin Seraphine. You got more long range, uh, but Nautilus can get a look in with a hook. But Jin and Seraphine will do whatever they can to stop it. It's just gonna be. It's gonna be up to to Louis to to call the timing on when these fights go. So if they can get a good hook, maybe uh, Varus can get some kills early. But if not, it's just gonna be Jin uh, farming from eight and a half years away. Yeah, and if that Nautilus missteps, it's gonna cut. A lot of damage comes out from Seraphine Jin. Any ability goes down, you're gonna be locked down for quite a long time. So, yeah, pretty volatile bot lane. Pretty volatile mid lane. Mm -hmm. You got two heavy damaged junglers. Silas has some pretty big ults here. The Nautilus ult. The Orn ult. Yep. Probably ult. Varus ult's okay. Rek'Sai ult's not great, but it's something. Uh, so yeah, and yeah. if he's really feeling spicy, hey, the Kali ult is available. Yeah, so could do some interesting stuff there. Uh, with all the movement they already have, then dashing around some more with the ults. Uh, could get some big plays going. And it feels like we haven't seen Sid on his signature Silas in such a long time. Yeah. It feels really good to have it in game two. It's yeah. a big game. It's a big game for Paradise Valley. Yeah, you got to win this one to even have a hope of going to finals here. Because uh, if you lose here, it's just going... You're going. You're out of the tournament. So now you gotta. This is where you gotta gotta play your best. So uh, you got Viego and Silas, uh, people playing their best champions, uh, to try and get themselves through. Uh, so we'll see if they can pull it off here. Yeah, and I'm suspecting it's gonna be a lot of fighting this game. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just have such skirmish heavy champions. You have the Kali Rexai. You have the Viego Silas, the Camille. Yeah, any pair of these two could really just—I mean, it could go either way at this point. Yeah, you can just run. They're all just gonna start running at each other, and whoever's gonna get those initial kills could really set the the tempo for how this game is going to be played. Uh, if Camille gets some kills early, that split push uh, is going to be a bit difficult to deal with. So, uh, Glendale's gonna want to pay extra special attention to that. But on the other side, if the Kali uh, gets. Uh, those early kills say goodbye to your bot lane because they are not allowed to play uh, for the rest of the match once the Kali gets a little strong. Yeah, absolutely. Just having a free access to the back line is going to be a scary thought. Silas does have that E2. And Viego does have his W. 
Camille also has that wall. The wall, the wall, uh, I'm not sure what it's called. Wall Pretty. dive. Wall Hook dive, shot. yes. Hook shot. There you go. Hook shot. So if it does come down to it, they can provide a little bit of appeal. But like you said, if a collie gets ahead, it's just going to be a one shot. Yeah. That bot lane is not going to be able to see a day. They're just going to see gray screen. Yeah, but last time we saw Seraphine coming out in uh in in the league, we saw it was oh god, I'm blanking on the name. Who was playing it last week? Who was playing it? You were here. I, I was here. I'm thinking. You remember. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'm lost. You're lost. I'm lost. Who is it? Who is it? I know who it is. Of the Dawn. That's the name. There you okay. go. Oh, uh, we saw Of the Dawn hit some big ults, big four man, five man ults that really uh, put their team through, uh, and which is why they're up against uh, Chandler Gilbert right now, uh, squaring off. So we'll see if we can, if Griggs Beef can mimic that performance tonight, uh, pull out some some big moves here. Yeah, and it feels like this game is really just going to be based on who's going to make the first move. And are they going to make that first move correctly? Are they going to hit what they need to hit? Really exciting stuff coming into game two. Nautilus, they do have an, they do have an ability to invade. It looks like they're going to go for it. They're going to go through the bot lane. Yep. They did try for it last time. Uh, looking for a... Maybe they might go for a late invade, or maybe they are covering the possibility of an invade into their own jungle as payback for the start of the last game. Uh, even though nothing really came of it. They are just stacking. Yeah, you see the five point from PV. It looks like nothing's going to come out of level one. We're not flipping the game level one. I'd love to see it. Yeah, be comfortable. Because this game is about to get real dirty real quick. It looks like yep. Viego wants to start top side. We're going to see the Rek'Sai start bot side this time. <laughs> yep. Uh, just starting the side with their, their red, it looks like. Uh, get them that early uh, that health regen. They don't really, they don't need uh, cooldowns or mana regen. Uh, their cooldowns are fast enough as it is, and uh, they don't have mana, so don't matter. Yeah, and just being able to path to top side and help out his Orn in this lane, because like you said earlier, it's going to be a little rough for the Orn. It's going to be nice just to have your Rek'Sai up there protecting you a bit. Orn is sitting under tower. Yeah, not much to do. Uh, Alessandrite might just try and uh, make this wave a little bit weird. I mean, Mori uh, was able to pick up two of their minions and to do able to pick up all three uh, with the funny man, uh, Silas. I have Chain Whip. Yeah, and I was mistaken. We actually have Canyon starting bot side. So we might see some early jungle fighting if they end up meeting up with each other at some point. Yeah. Louis Lavania could be looking for a hook. Oh, the hook is going to land onto Goose Freak. Uh, just barely. The heal comes out, but not after the ignite. So Goose Freak going to take a lot of damage. Will they go down? Or Goose Freak needs to be careful, but it's going to be first blood onto Angel Sandwich. Really nice snipe from Varus there. And that's what we were talking about. If you get hit by that hook, it's going to be really difficult for you to get out of it. Yeah, the, the hook and then immediately the root afterwards. Just really tough because then you get you're just stuck in place and that's free damage uh, coming from enemy AD carry so that's, that is what you are looking for if you are uh, Angel Sandwich just hoping to sort of get any early lead uh, yeah. yeah it's already you can see a bit of a CS deficit in the bot lane because of it he loses just a little bit of farm there yeah just a little bit uh not an insane amount, but, you know, lose it. they are an entire wave down now, which is going to be rough because Angel Sandwich is going to be able to get uh, three first and then probably uh, get to six first, unless something happens uh, that pushes them out of lane now. Uh, Aspect pulling the wave. Just trading back autos. Uh, Aspect trying to hold this wave under their, near their turret uh, just so that Alessandra can't do anything to them uh, for the time being. Alessandra is going to move top jungle to protect his jungler. They're going to go for this scuttle here. 
Yep, nothing going on in the top lane. Just free time to move for a second. Yeah, and Kenyon getting this first back here can be big for him. He has the tempo at the moment. It looks like Rek'Sai is going to try to look for that bottom scuttle. Yeah. Should see that the bot top scuttle is already gone. He knows that Kenyon is up in the top. He's just going to go straight to mid. Uh, to do taking a lot of damage. The Ignite did come out, but uh, not going to be enough. He's going yeah, to force the recall. But sit in a bit of a tough spot. He's going to have to TP, TP back onto his wave. He actually ended up staying. Yep, staying just to try and make sure uh, if something, any flame business happens in that bot lane near that scuttle crab, uh, that he is there and ready for it. Because uh, he is Silas, he can heal a bit. He is level five, I believe. He is uh, does have the W max. So, and Alessandra doing a lot of damage here, but Aspect doing a little bit more, and he's a bit tankier. Yeah, that Ruby Crystal just gave him a little bit more of an edge in that trade. Canyon did end up getting double scuttle, which is good for him. He gets this bit of tempo that he can ride on for a little bit. Yep, and then we see in the top side, uh, Aspect deciding to take Cole, uh, knowing there is no chance for him to really fight and leave this lane early on. Lucifer going to get hooked again. It's going to be their second death of the game to that hook. Tizo, uh, flash used from Angel Sandwich, so. Flash for flash, I suppose. Oh, yep. Go on, Alessandra doing uh, Camille things. Doing a lot of damage. Silas is on the move here. And Orton doesn't up. have mana. Yep. It does have flash, but it doesn't matter. Uh, that Q, the Cho'Gath ult on it on the two second cooldown is there and ready. Yeah, you just see how much Sheen does for Camille in that situation. It goes from even trades, even trades like that weren't going towards Camille to immediate just destruction in the top lane. Yeah. Yeah. That champ is fun to play. I love playing that champion, but that champ can be a little hard sometimes. Yeah, get absolutely. The, get, get the right angles. Get the, get the good trades. And you see Canyon playing a bit more passive. He's just chilling with his CS lead right now. He's making sure his camps are reset. Sidude yeah. having a bit of a CS deficit. Yeah, Not it's too a, much. It's a, it's a little rough. We probably can do a little bit more early than Silas can. Silas, uh, not quite as uh, much of an early game presence as the Sakali. So, uh, just try and take any even trades that they can get. Uh, Alessandra trying to try and uh, push this under tower, hopefully make Aspect Legend lose the S or give themselves a free recall angle here. Yeah, and it's a good back because Rek'Sai is near topside now. Yeah, it looks like they might be looking for a play onto mid. Louis is hanging out uh, in this mid bot, but it is going to be backing up now. Spotted Rek'Sai on the River Warden. So it looks like they're just going to play it safe. Yeah, not too concerned. Uh, just letting the game come to them. Wait for both teams are waiting for the other one to to make a play and make a mistake. But uh, looks like in the mid lane, neither team wants to make uh, that mistake here. So they're both playing careful. We could see Tizo go for a bit of a over the wall look. It looks like he's just uh, actually just going to be taking a look through the jungle. Uh, it looks like there's a fight happening in the mid lane here uh, between Tizo and uh, Sadud with Akali moving down. Uh, so they should they did side him out so and so he's gonna have to be careful when Rek'Sai hits six because if he does end up taking too much damage from akali we're getting a little weird in the jungle yep it wouldn't be mc uh, with some weird stuff happening uh in jungle so dude taking a lot of damage not quite able to find the mark the ignite going to do a lot of damage will be enough to take them down no not quite they are able to get out with their life there uh, minamori not committing the ultimate not thinking they were going to need it but and that is going to be Sidude being able to get out, but at the same time, you're losing so much farm. Yeah, it's a bit unfortunate seeing Silas just lose all this gold. I mean, Minamori just knows what to do. She has her weight pushing in. She saw the opportunity to all in, and she did. And it's, uh, it was a smart buy in lane for the Cole uh, from the Orn. Uh, so they are getting some good value out of it. Uh, especially with Alessandra right? not quite being able to do any aggressive big trades. Uh, you know, no no big commits uh, so far, so. 
just gonna try and make Orin regret this uh, purchasing the coal, but I mean, hey, this lane's gonna go on for a while, so I don't think he will be. Yeah, we're not many, we're not getting much action in the top lane from the junglers too, so it does just allow Orin to play it a little bit more chilled out. Mm -hmm. Yep, flash hook coming in. Uh, the ulti coming down and going to be picking up Goose Creek, Goose Creek uh, taking a lot of damage and going down eventually there. Angel Sandwich did get exhausted, so they aren't able to quite continue the fight there. Uh, on to Mr. Griggs Beef. Uh, and Louie just seems to find every single hook in this matchup right now. Well, yeah. As I said, Caster's Curse, as I said, he misses the hook. And well, I mean, that would... In no world do you want that hook to actually hit, because then you hit, end up under turret against Seraphine with, <laughs> yeah. uh, Seraphine yeah, with weird. Up. That's a little weird. But uh, the the lead that bot lane has right now for uh, for Big Grimdale. Root. Big root. Uh, the ult is coming from. out. Yeah, Can he hit it? Nice, oh, nice little snipe there from Goose Freak. Let them know. Uh, Candy is taking a lot of damage from Mina Moore. The ultimate going to come out. It is a 3v3 at the top side. And it looks like Alessandra is going to be immediately diced up. Uh, so dude and Canyon have to get away with their life. The ulti being blown for Alessandra just took so much damage out of nowhere. Yeah, it was the nice, it was a really nice find from the Ornal. It just allowed Mina Mori to do what he pleased with that. And it just Silas being on the backside of that fight was just a little bit unfortunate. Yeah. yeah Silas needs a little bit more gold in their pocket before they're able to do anything. So you, we might need uh, we might need to get some ganks or get some uh, just some help to, to push this wave out so that way uh, Silas can leave and go fight someone who isn't a Kali. Yeah, it's coming down in this lane too. Silas just needs some sort of resource to get himself back in a stable position. Because at this point he's just getting perma shoved in. He's losing waves under the tower. Yeah. Minamori has looking free for, rain. Yep, so you're looking for a little bit of a fight. Knows that uh, Minamori does not have ulti up. Uh, just going to take the W there. Uh, Minamori doing quite a bit of damage. Will they go for a little play here with the E? Will be a Which little I bit does dangerous. have ult here. Yep. Oh, not quite able to get it there. So dude going to be picked off for the long range shot from Tizo. Ulti used by Angel Sandwich in the bot lane, but it's not going to find its mark. So Griggs Beef is going to walk away safely and uninjured. Louie, though, has different plans with the hook coming out. The big root flash used. Ulti used from both supports. And it's going to be taking them out of the fight for a little bit, but it's just going to be the death of Seraphine in the bot lane. Yeah, there's just too much come there's too much damage coming out from the bars right now. If you get caught out at all in this lane, it's gonna be a death. Alessandra just taking those nice and uh, quick trades. Looks like Goose Freak might end up getting dove here. He needs to clear uh, the wave. Yep. Going to try. Teleport coming out uh, from Silas to try and get themselves something back here. And it looks like Angel Sandwich might be the one who's dangerous. Flash used. Uh, ulti used by Sidhu to try and get in, but doesn't have the damage. Double kill going over uh, to the Varus. Nice try to answer from Sidhu. I saw what he was going for. The wave was almost dead, so they would have been taking free tower shots. Minamori with a nice answer. Unfortunate that he couldn't find the bars in that situation. Wow. Big combo from Aspect Legend doing so much damage, uh, but not quite able to secure the kill there. So yeah, he for it. Didn't have cooldowns at the moment, but scared to see you in the work doing that much damage with uh, just a fire cape, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what, that's what you do. We have Alessandra coming in though, looking for a fight. The ulti coming through. That's gonna help them deal some more damage. They are gonna walk out of it though. Uh, so Aspect Legend might be finding themselves in a bit of danger uh, as the Q just sends them uh, back to the fountain. Yeah, and that buy from Camille, buying the Divine Center, immediately teleporting back, just really nice play from him. Yeah, so much damage, so much healing. Can't be uh, taken out like that again. It's like. Canyon is just going to try and look for an invade into the top side. Uh, trying to cover the Akali in case the Akali comes in. And it looks like the Akali might be coming in. Uh, and taking a bit of damage. Going to be able to stun them up. Trying to run away. Uh, Camille is moving. Looks like they are looking to get their jungler out. Yeah. And sighting out uh, Canyon in the top side of the map. They just decide to go once again uh, with the 
Glendale Classic, which is uh, Go Drag. Yeah, and Ocean Soul is going to be really big for Glendale, Glendale here if they end up getting that soul. Just because, like, you have Orin with just so much HP. You have the Nautilus frontlining the team. Even Akali and Rek'Sai can use that Ocean Soul really well. Yeah, Alessandra is uh, doing as much damage to Aspect Legend as they can. Uh, going to be taking the full W here, uh, but is able to get the stun off. And Canyon is here on the backside. They're just going to be able to pick him off. Nice and easy. Great speed. Uh, not quite able to gets their ankles broken on the ultimate so do trying to fight but it is a level 11 Akali and they are fighting themselves in danger ulti used uh, onto Sadu that's going to find two to knock them up but they are going to be able to walk it out alive again though flash w going to miss Minamori taking a lot of damage but is it going to be enough yes it is uh, and the ulti committed uh, from Jin uh, not going to do anything there nice little turnaround from PB there Glendo did you know stay a little bit too long they are going to trade back the bottom tower though allowing them to open up the map a little bit more and it looks like we're going to see maybe Balin is going to move to mid lane after this wave he's going to get his back he's going to get he's going to cash out what he's got make his way to, towards mid lane but right now we have that rift herald that rift herald is coming up yeah, the next object, yeah, just fight over the next objective. It looks like uh, Tizo is already signaling that he wants to go for it. So just headed straight there. Uh, but it's going to be a little rough for them because Alessandrite does have the priority in this lane. So they will have to do something about that Camille. Uh, about, they are going to have to finish off attack on Titan Lady uh, before they are able to do anything for free. Like, Holly doesn't have TP at the moment. It is coming up very soon. So she's going to walk bot lane. Try to get this wave out as much yeah. as possible. She's gonna go for the one two. Yeah, I mean, it is a Kali. It is a level 11 Kali versus a level seven and a level uh, nine uh, bot lane. And Goose Freak just trying to run it straight out, but Flash used, do they have W up? It, no, not quite. Uh, so not quite able to find the kill. Uh, and Akali just doing the one v two. And that's what we said, Akali gets a little bit fed and now uh, your bot lane no longer exists. They can't play the yeah. game anymore. And she's going to keep on running the map around the map. Oh, we see a crossplay. Yeah, not quite. is on the backside. Yeah, flash use from Louie. There are four members of Glendale there uh, waiting in the wings looking for it. Flash used uh, from Tizo there. But Canyon is under their turret. Minamori, though, is here. It's going to be one versus five on the turret dive. It looks like Canyon is just going to be taken down. Yeah, we talked about this Akali. If you don't get her under control, she's gonna just run over your bot lane. And when you don't have a bot lane that does damage, well, a 5v3 is a really tough spot to be in no matter how you see it. Looks like they're just gonna keep on trying to siege top. They did grab the Rift Herald. It looks like they're gonna immediately put it mid. So yeah, I think we're gonna see a similar run of the last game. They're gonna get all that jungle pressure. They're gonna get all this vision. It looks like Sid wants to go for it. Tizo is in a bit of trouble. Ulti's committed. The dude is going to be on the chase. Flash, the auto cancels, uh, but they are able to pick it up. Goose Freak a little bit far out here, uh, way far out actually, uh, against a I guess it's Akali, just moving around, doing the Akali stuff. Yeah, and when there's no objectives of you really have to be careful when you're pushing out waves because you don't, and especially if you don't know where Akali is, you could just walk up like she did and take your life away. As simple as that. And I believe uh, Sun Tzu once said this, uh, sucks to suck. <laughs> that's that's, that's cool. right. That's, if you get what? caught out, that's on you. That's the end of the story. <laughs> In the wide words of Confucius, uh, buy pink words, please. <laughs> please, I'm begging you. Oh. We need to establish something. Canyon might get caught out here, too. There are three members versus two of PVCC. They do know Mina Mori is here. They do know Louie is here. They are going straight on to Mina Mori. The ultimate's used uh, from both sides. Katie taking a lot of damage, but doing not enough to keep themselves alive. It's just going to be outside. I'm going to be picked off. Uh, constant pressure. They, they look good for the 2v3 at the beginning, but... I mean, Glendale is just playing together so concisely. Yeah, and I kind of want to see that from the side of PV because they have big ults. They have the Seraphine ult. They can zone off with the Jin ult. 
But when you get caught out in your jungle, or when you go for a play in the jungle, it's just really tough because if Orn ends up being there, you're in a choke point, and all this CC is pretty much guaranteed. They're at soul point, Glendale. They're looking really strong with an AK gold lead. Yep, looking for the bot lane once again. Uh, the ultimate is going to connect, but not a whole lot to be done about that. Louis could look for a hook. Ooh, good connection from Aspect Legend to do some damage. He's up uh, getting knocked up by the stolen Nautilus ult. He's done down Mina Mori. Going to take one turret shot, but not a second one. The turret is going to fall immediately. Uh, Grease Beef does have the ultimate, so if they do try and continue this forward, there is a potential angle here back in. But it looks like they're just going to play it safe. They're going to wait until uh, it looks like Baron spawns in 20 seconds. Uh, so they're just going to wait for that to come up, and then they're going to take that objective and try and move the game forward. Yeah, it's a simple game plan for Glendale. You wait for the big objectives, you take them for free, and then you push. It's as simple as that. If they really wanted to, they could even wait for the dragon. Alessandra is able to get themselves out there. Uh, Louis still looking for a way in, but this time they're not going to engage onto him. Just knowing how many members of Glendale there are nearby. Don't want to do anything too crazy. And this is the problem when you can't establish vision in your jungle. You kind of just have to play this guessing game of where are they? Are they on Baron right now? Can I walk up? Yeah. And it looks like Sadud got that way in. Uh, but besides, they are just going to move uh, to stop any play from happening on this Baron. Uh, but Kali does have the TP. Uh, Louis taking a lot of damage. Uh, Mina Mori could teleport in, ulti used. Uh, teleport is, in fact, coming in from Alessandrite. Uh, so they are going to look for an angle here. Big ulti going to find a lot of members of Glendale. It looks like they're going to be going onto Angel Sandwich, taking a lot of damage from Alessandrite. That's an 850 gold bounty going over to the side of the of the top laner. Alessandrite is taking plenty of damage on their own, though. Ganyan trying to fight Mina Mori. Uh, but are they going to have enough damage? Yes, they are. The Flash is going to be able to secure it for them. And it looks like Goose Freak is going to be trying to take on Aspect Legend. Aspect Legend taking in the Orn Horn. Uh, Goose Freak trying to fight under their own turret, but uh, they just keep themselves alive. And Canyon going on a killing spree as Aspect is trying to run away under the enemy turret. And that's going to be a big pickup for Paradise Valley. And that's what we see. If you pull the trigger, it's a really good look. No matter, like, how they were down AK gold and they ended up pulling that fight together. Yep. Alessandra on the backside with that TP it was huge. He found the bars. The bars wasn't able to do anything. And then Canyon picking off one by one the rest of the team. Yeah, and that's what we, we've seen from so many teams uh, this, this season where once the enemy team makes a mistake, we actually see punishment and we see people capitalizing incredibly. Uh, on small mistakes like that. Louis walks up too far and immediately the fight starts while the enemy team is trying to pull their, their boy out. They, Paradise Valley says, nah, we want this fight, gamer. We'll flip the game here. We'll flip the game here and now. Yeah, and just it, like on one side, sure, a Akali can one-shot your backline, but if you don't pay attention to that Camille or that Diego, they can do the exact same thing. Yeah. And speaking of one-shotting uh, your bot lane, uh, Kali trying to assassinate Griggs Beef on the side. Uh, Canyon is looking for their angle, and they should know that Akali is hanging out here. They do see him, uh, but Goose Creek, uh, they are looking for an angle onto Minamori. The W not quite able to connect. Uh, Minamori going golden, Bars ulti going wide. Uh, Louis finding themselves in a bit of a tough spot. It's here between multiple members of the team. The big ulti coming through. Alessandra not quite able to lock down the Varus once again, uh, but that's just going to be a tough fight here. Big ulti. Shots coming in uh, from Goose Creek is able to connect a bunch of them onto the back side of the fight. Uh, but Flash going on to Sid, their ulti use to has slain Louie, uh, but it's taking a lot of damage. It looks like it's going to be an assassination job uh, coming in from the side of Glendale, picking up three in quick succession. Bang, bang, bang. It looks like they're yeah. going to be taking that bear and going straight for the end here. And it was just a, it was a really nice play from Glendale. They learned from their mat last mistake. You don't split up too much. If you see the Camille on the backside, you let the Orn and the Nautilus deal with it. Let the Kali kill the backline, get as much damage as she possibly can on her own, and then they can support when they figure out Camille. It's a really well fought by Glendale. I mean, PV being split, Camille and Seraphine, 
And then you have Canyon, Sid, and Goose Freak all together. It just makes it really difficult for you to find a decent engage for everyone to go off of. And it looks like they're going to go for the soul instead. Yeah, just uh, looking for the soul. Don't want to end just yet. They do have the advantage. They do have the pressure. Uh, and it looks like at once now that they figured out how they want to fight it, uh, they are looking for another fight. As long as Canyon doesn't get big resets here, uh, they will be okay. But Minamori, Minamori is looking for an angle onto the jungler. A lot of damage going through ulti use, and they are just going to pull them away from the Drake uh, as best they can while their team secures it. Yeah, smart play from Minamori there. Just they know they're going to target Minamori if she's by herself because they know they can kill her. But. They have so much damage on the side of the Ooh, nice that flash dragon hook by Louis. Nice flash hook by Louis. It's just going to immediately tear them apart. Uh, so, Goose Freak going down for the ninth time this game. Looks like they might be looking for a some sort of big play onto Minamori on the on the back side of this fight. Try and pick him off as best they can. Minamori, however, uh, going to turn it all the way back around and take down uh, who looks like the dude and Daddy and just take them back on the back side of the fight. It's 2v4 die, which is going in the favor of Glendale. And what an absolutely dominant performance this game from Glendale, just doing everything they could. They, you know, they make the one mistake, but as soon as they figure out what the mistake was, they turn it back around and uh, make it right. Yeah, props to Glendale. They played really well. Just keep your top laner in those tank picks. He knows what he's doing. He didn't throw lanes too hard. Minamori finding he's every lane kill all. I don't know possible. What you're uh, game one, uh, was a little bit, a little bit one-sided, but definitely like the Camille, the Camille lane was like really well played on the side of Orn. No, but just well played from Glendale. They're played to their strengths perfectly. They knew what they wanted to do and they executed. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm excited to see uh, these guys play. Uh, we don't know who is going to be making it out of between uh, Mesa and Chandler Gilbert, but. Whoever it is, they'll be facing off uh, Glendale uh, next week. So uh, I'm excited to, to watch that game. Are you excited? Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be a really fun one. It's going to be action-packed. We have on the side of Chandler Gilbert, higher skilled players, but Glendale plays really well together. So I want to see what they'll be able to do. All right. Well, I mean, I've got, I've got no notes for this game. Uh, so... Uh, thank you all for watching. Do you have any closing remarks here, Memon? Um, I don't think so. It was a great series. If you got to witness this, I'm sure you can see that Glendale is going to be, uh, you know, it might they might be a threat to Chandler Gilbert, and we might see a little bit of an upset. Uh -huh. So uh, we'll so we'll see you all uh, next week. Thank you all for watching. Uh, I've been Cynetic. This has been Memon. Uh, take care. Have a good Peace. night, everyone.